Hi there, Flay from Encode here. In this video, I will show you how to create a detection system in Unity. So give me a second, I will show you a preview of the feature we'll be working on. We'll play the game, I can move with the player, and as soon as I will enter the detection range of the enemy, there will be a message, player has been detected. Okay, so let's start. I suppose you would like to start from the same project as I am working on, so I will close this one. You can find the link in the description of this video where you can download this starting project. Okay, so in the description of the video, you should find a project called yt-example-project-detection. It's a zipped one. All right, so you'll find a zip file. You need to open it and open in Unity. Okay, so I'll remove this one actually. I will unzip the file. This will create a folder of this file. It will go simply to Unity Hub. Click on Unity Hub, it will add here a project. Okay, so add project and just notify you, I am working on a version 2020.2.1 F1. All right, so let's add this project here. Let's find in our, what you have just downloaded, unzipped project, example detection, open it, and they should open this Unity project. So we'll click here, detection. And this will take a couple of seconds and project will be opened. Uh, one thing here, if this is not open for you, you need to simply go to the project here in the assets. Okay, so project, scenes, and a sample scene, you will just simply, you need to double click the sample scene and this will open the current scene as you can see right now. Okay, this actually already completed project. So you have your enemy with a detection range, you have a player you can move. So what we will do, we'll open here a script, just simply click on the enemy Click here, enemy controller script. Oh, let's open the script. Okay, so edit script, and this will open the enemy script. Okay, and what we'll do, we'll remove this look for a player method and we'll create our own one. Okay, so I'll remove this one and also method look for a player. So now currently this detection will not work. I'm sorry for interrupting this lecture, but I would like to just remind you that if you are looking for the extensive course on how to build the games in Unity, then you can find such a course at Einkode Academy. You are going to build three full grown games in Unity, starting with the basic stuff and finishing with a fully featured RPG genre game where you can fight, explore, and complete quests. So, in a case you are interested, you can check all the information at academy.eindcode.com. You can save it like this. All right, you can play the game, and now detection will not work. We'll still display this detection range here, but detection will not simply work. As I will start the game, I will enter detection range. There is nothing here, no message. Okay, so let's start to work on this feature. This will be implementation part. I will be not explaining much in this lecture. If you are interested in the explanation of how this works, will be I will have another YouTube video on this topic, so you can find it in the description. Let's open here enemy controller and let's start to work on this feature. So first we will create here a method to look for the player or look for the target. So here is our enemy script. We'll, we'll create here a private function, private vo void, I will call it a look, look for a player. Okay, so look for a player. All right, and we will call here look for look for a player in update method. In the look for for a player, we'll have a functionality to detect to detect the player. First, I will check here if I have a con if if uh, my player is currently in the scene. Okay, you can do it like this. I have a static method here in a player controller to get my instance of a player controller. So I can simply get just check for this, like I just need to get here a player controller and check here for instance. And if this instance is null, simply return here and not even bother to continue. All right, so return and return from here null. Actually, uh, I would like to, from the look for a player, I would like to actually return actual instance of the player. So I will return, I will write here return type and this will be return type of the player controller, not, uh, not void. Okay, let's continue. Don't worry about this error here. We need to get here actual player. Okay, so first I will store here a vector tree which represents the position of the enemy. I will call it enemy position. Since this script is already on the on the enemy game object, we can get it from a transform position and this is get me position of the enemy. What we need to get now is the vector representing position to player. So vector which will lead from the enemy to player position. Okay, first let's write it and then I will draw it for you so you will understand it better. Vector tree to player and to player position you can get by dividing the player position minus enemy position. 
So let's write here player controller, instance, transform position minus enemy position, and this will get you to player vector. You can also imagine it in a unity like this. Let's go back for a second to unity. Let's imagine top to bottom view, something like this. Let me get this uh, drawing tool. Okay, well, let's, let me draw it like this. So there is a X axis, there is a Z axis, or actually other way around. There is the X axis and there is the Z axis and your player resides and the enemy on some uh, positions, okay? So here you have a player, some position of the player, and here you see your enemy. All right, and now the player is on some position, enemy is on the di different one. If you would like to get from your enemy to the player, you need to divide these positions. I will show it to actually on the actual grid. Okay, let me draw it for you, okay? So you have a, you have a player, all right. Then you have an enemy like this, we already saw on the grid. All right, the player in this case is position 1-1. One, one. It really doesn't matter in which position, the result will be the same. The enemy is in position x1, 3z, so 1 and 3. I will mark it also axis so you see it. x and the z. If you would like to get two player position, we are getting here, we will get player position vector minus uh, enemy position uh, vector, so this is uh, 1, 1, minus enemy position 1, 3. This 1 minus 1 is 0, so this will be 0. 1 minus 3, minus three is minus 2. All right, so if I would like to get uh, from the enemy to player, I need to go on the x0. Okay, that makes sense. They are on the same x position and minus 2. So, three, uh, so 2 down, so minus 2. 3 minus 2 is uh, 1, so this will get me player position. So this, 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 this vector here represent how I can get to the player 0, minus 2. All right, so just uh, for better imagination, this picture, and we'll be drawing more later. Okay, back to calling editors. So now we, we know that was a two-player position, and we will reset to player y position, uh, y position to 0, because we really didn't, don't need to know the y position. It's a we are just getting these positions flat, all right? We don't need any Y position in 3D space. All right, uh, so when we want to get a distance between the player and the enemy, we just actually need to check for the this two-player vector magnitude. What's the magnitude? Um, do I have still the roving here? No, the magnitude of a vector, if you have a vector like this, all right, the magnitude of the vector is this length of the vector. So that's a basically distance. If this is a player and this is an enemy, Magnitude of this vector is the distance between these two positions. All right, so let's get back here. Let's write here if statement and simply if statement to player, which is this re vector representing the how to get to the player from the enemy. This magnitude is a smaller or the equal than the detection radius. By the way, up here we have a detection radius of 10 units. So if the two player magnitude is a smaller than detection radius, then for sure the enemy is, is somewhere in the range of the, the player is somewhere in the range of the enemy. So let's write here, debug log, player, player has been, has been detected. And for sure we found the player now. Let's save this, let's go back to Unity. All right, so let's see, actually let's pull, I will pull this scene here so it's easier to see it at the same time. I'll click on the enemy, so we'll see this detection range. All right, detection range of 10 units. Let's play the game. Actually, we have here issue. Uh, enemy, not all of the code, but returns a value. Okay, my mistake, guys. Uh, let's go back for a second, and I'll also return here instance of the player. So return player controller instance like this. Now it will work. All right, actually, no. We need to also return here default value. Let's just for now, let's just return here null. Okay. Okay, now it will work, so we can go back to Unity, let's play the game, and you will see now, if I will be in the range of the enemy, I will display this message, okay? So let's play the game, and you can see, as soon as I will enter here, player has been detected. I will go out, clear it out, go in back in here, player has been detected. Okay, so this two-player position, as I showed you before, let me, let me drop it also here, so enemy here, 
this two player position represent this vector here, right? And its magnitude is the length. So if this length is smaller than this detection radius here, all right, this means we are in, for sure in the range of the enemy. The only problem now is that we are detecting only the this uh, only the range. We are not checking here for angles. So my player can be also here. My player can be here, and I will be still detected because I am checking for the entire entire this circle like this around the. I cannot mark it better, but you can imagine like this circle around the around the enemy. Okay, so I'm checking for this radius of a 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, all right, and so on, okay? So I'm not checking for a specific angle. I'm not, speci I'm not checking specifically for this position here. Okay, so, so far, so good. It's working partially. What we need to do now, we need to introduce here a very interesting if statement that's very, it can be very confusing, but if you check for a specific angle, you need to get here a vector tree, dot product, dot product of a two player position, which is normalized position, and a transform forward position, like this. And this has to be larger, I will write it on a new line here. This has to be larger as the cosine, so math f cosine, and a cosine of a detection angle only halfway of the detection angle, 0.5. F and multiply because this needs um, to the cosine. You need to provide the an angle, uh, but not in a degrees, but in a, a radian. So you need to get here math F and the degrees to radians like this. So if that is a vector three dot product of the two player position normalized and the transform forward is larger than the cosine, this means you have detected a uh, player. Okay, right here curly, curly brackets. And I'm think I'm missing here something. Let me see vector dot product of two player. Okay, here just one bracket. Like this. All right, and here should be two brackets. My mistake, guys. Like this. All right, and now here we will be actually returning this player instance. And here I will write uh, the pl player has been detected. So debug log. And player has been detected. All right, that's the entire implementation. Let's go to Unity and you will see now I will be detecting the player only when I will be going to this detection range. Okay, I'm going here, not, not detected yet. All right, as soon as I will go down here, you can see player has been detected. I will go out, not detected. You can see no messages here. All right, let me go from behind here. And now player has been detected. All right, so you can see it's uh, definitely working. I understand this implementation, especially this part here, dot product not normalized and vector forward is larger than the cosine of detection angle and the degrees, uh, uh, not degrees, but the detection angle and the multiplied by half of the, of the 0 0.5, so basically I'm getting here a half of detection angle, can be confusing. Uh, actually, that's that's gonna be it from this video. In the next video, I will be explaining in the details. Also, I will be drawing into the grid how does it work, why we are getting here dot product, and why we are getting here cosine. But that's gonna be for in another video. You can also find the link in the description where you want to see this deeper explanation of this if statement here. I think a part of that this should be pretty clear what's happening here. Only confusing part, I am sure it's just this. And also, if you are interested into the explanation of this part here on Draw Gizmos Selected, I will also have a YouTube video for this. Also, uh, look in my channel or find the, maybe there is a link on this description. I'm not sure right now because uh, this video is not recorded yet. All right, guys. So uh, let's take a look at the next YouTube video, how to, why we are getting here dot product and a, and a cosine. So I hope to see you there, guys. Cheers.